in this episode, I want to introduce you to a distillery that I think deserves your attention right here on the Tequila Ombre coming up next. Welcome to this episode of the Tequila Hombre, where today I want to talk about a distillery first, and then we're going to review their house brand. But this distillery, I think, deserves your attention for some of the things that they're doing that is just really, really good. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the details and talk about this distillery. All right, so the distillery I want to talk about today is NOM 1588. It's known as El Mexicano, and their house brand, of course, is El Mexicano. Now, one thing I really like about this distillery is the fact that the people that own it are legends in the tequila world. It is the Banuelos family. Now, if you're not familiar with the Banuelos family, Don Leon Banuelos, who's the, the father, the, uh, the paternal uh, leader of the family, he is um, comes from the group that created and uh, sold Cazadores. So he was him and his brothers originally did Cazadores together and um, made it so it was the first tequila brand to sell a million cases. So they made a fantastic tequila with Cazadores. They sold it to Bacardi and Bacardi just ruined it. And so um, they're really well known for producing fantastic tequila. So when they uh, sold Bacardi, he wasn't allowed to produce tequila. He had a, a no compete agreement. So he wasn't allowed to make tequila. But once his no compete agreement ended, he's built this new distillery called El Mexicano. Now they originally came out with El Mexicano tequilas a while back and you saw them in the United States. They were um, low priced uh, tequilas and they were they were good. But what they did is they pulled their brand back because they didn't they didn't want their brand to be a budget brand. They wanted their brand to be um, a really good quality brand like like what everybody else gets with Fortaleza and with G4 and stuff like that because it is of the same quality as that. So they brought it back and then they did some more research, more work. They're a very experimental family. And that's one thing I really like about them. They have at their distillery, brick ornos, they have autoclaves, they have all kinds of equipment and they test things constantly to see whether they can produce a better flavor profile. And so they worked to produce a better flavor profile, a better quality tequila with the El Mexicano line. And now it's been re-released back to the United States and I'm happy to do a review of it. Now, one of the other things that I really like about this distillery is they do not believe in using additives at all. Not at all. They're big proponents of doing things naturally and letting the agave do the talking, letting the processes do the talking, and letting there be good quality tequila. So right now, you don't see them doing a bunch of different brands, uh, contract brands. They have a few contract brands. One of them is the Malavida tequila that I've been talking about that's uh, done for uh, Alex Gonzalez, who's the drummer for Mana. And because he wanted something done right, he found the Banuelos family and used them as well. And then they also have been doing some work with Dos Artes. Now, Dos Artes originally used additives in their tequila for the, with the different distillery that they did before, but they're testing their batches now by doing additive-free batches with El Mexicano. El Mexicano told them, they said, look, you can keep doing your additive stuff if you want, but I bet you I could produce a better tequila for you with no additives that'll be natural tasting that people are gonna love. And so they actually have a Dos Artes um, plat, 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 Platinum, <laughs> and they have a Dos Artes Joven and a Dos Artes Reposado out uh, from 1588. So um, I'll do a review of those. I've got those coming. I'll do a review of those so you can see how those are coming. But anybody that can help move brands from using additives to being more traditional and people are happy with the product is a tequila distillery that I think deserves to be supported by us aficionados and people that like traditional additive free tequilas. All right, so that's kind of a background of El Mexicano. I'm really impressed with Don Leon and his family. I've gotten to know Tessie, his wife, and his son, Leon Benuelos as well. I know Max. I know uh, Guillermo or Willie. I've gotten to know the whole family. They're a great group of people, very passionate about tequila, and they're very passionate about producing the best quality tequila that they can. So check out the 1588 NOM and check out some of the other products and stuff that they do. But today we're gonna take a dive into their house tequila line. 
and we're going to look at El Mexicano Tequila. El Mexicano. So don't, uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the tasting portion and see what this tequila is all about. All right, I've been waiting forever to do this review because they, uh, I wanted me to wait until they got it into the United States. And so now that it's here, I'm super excited about being able to review this. So let's dive into it. The first exp expression from them that I'm going to do is the High Proof Blanco. I don't have the regular Blanco. I didn't bring that back with me. You have to watch out because this wax gets all over the place when you pull it off. Oh, I got wax everywhere. These are all wax dipped um, bottles. So you can see all the wax is just coming off here. All right, so let's pull the top off. Oops, uh-oh. That happens sometimes when these caps are glued on. Um, the glue comes loose on the caps and so the corks come off. So you just have to glue, I'll glue this back in uh, and it'll be fine. All right, so um, let's pour a little bit of the tequila in the glass. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Now this is 90 proof for 45% alcohol by volume. <clears throat> now to talk about their processes, um, this tequila, they do uh, a low pressure autoclave for making their tequila. They found that produced the best flavor profile. So they don't use the Hornos um, for their home, their, their house brand. Instead, they use low pressure autoclaves. They use a roller mill to extract the sugars from it. And then they use, um, they double distill using stainless steel pot stills with copper coils. And then uh, after fermentation, they then bottle it at 45% alcohol by volume. And they did a lot of tests. They tried still strength and stuff, but they found that the 45% really represented better than 90 proof. So looking at it in the glass, it coats the glass beautifully. Look at the legs and tears forming on it. <clears throat> it's going to have a nice viscous mouthfeel to it. Looking at the Blanco tequila itself, crystal clear, beautiful, little dashes of light going through, looking like silver and everything. So it looks beautiful. All right. So let's see what we get on the uh, nose on this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Beautiful, sweet cinnamon and baking spices from the cooked agave. Lots of cooked agave on the nose. And I love cooked agave in a good Blanco. I love when the cooked agave is first. Somebody said before that um, that they don't like tequila with too much cooked agave. And I'm like, well, what kind, of, what kind of tequila fan are you if you believe there's such thing as too much cooked agave in a, in a high proof Blanco? Well, this has beautiful cinnamon and baking spices in it. Picking up a hint of citrus in there as well. Some vanilla. It's got a little malolactic note to it as well. A little on the on the cheesy side, a little bit, just a little bit. It smells beautiful. It really does. There's lots of beautiful cinnamon and baking spice kick the gobby note on there. It smells great. It really does. All right, so let's see what we get on the flavor profile. We're not, not going to judge from the first sip because this is my first uh, sip of tequila right now, so... Let the lips and gums get acclimated. <clears throat> Wait for it to settle down. Okay, now we're good for the tasting. Salute. Really nice viscous mouthfeel to it. Beautiful cinnamon and baking spices. Flavor notes coming through. A hint of, of anise mixed into it. Kind of balances things out a little bit. Some vanilla notes in there as well. Some citrus. <clears throat> a little bit of pepper. It's a beautiful Blanco. This is really good. I think people would really love this. It's really good. It's a solid Blanco. Absolutely beautiful. Enjoy it. I could drink this thing all day long. 
that doesn't have a lot of burn to it or heat. It has a little bit, but not a whole lot, but nothing, you know, that's off-putting or it's going to make you just a little bit to carry the, the flavor notes through the, the tasting of it. So it's, but it has that really rich um, cinnamon and baking spice, sweet cinnamon and baking spices cooked agave note there. And it's just lots of it, which I love. So this is a really good Blanco. I'd rate this one a strong four agave for the High Proof Blanco. It's really good. So um, let's check out the Repo next. All right, so next we're going to take a look at the rep, Reposado. And this particular Reposado, when they're aged tequilas, they do something a little different with them in that <clears throat> they use brand new American and French oak barrels and they age uh, in both American and French oak barrels and then blend them together. So this is a blend of both American and French oak barrels that have not been used for anything else um, that are brand new. And they blend them together to create the flavor profile that they like. Uh, so this is all aged in barrels, you know, up to 11 months <clears throat> in the barrels. So looking at this in the glass, it coats the glass beautifully. Look at the legs and tears on it. Look how viscous it's going to be, how silky smooth it's going to be on the mouthfeel. Looking at the tequila itself, it is kind of like a straw brown color, a little light amber even maybe. It looks really good though, crystal clear. Nothing wrong with that at all. On the nose, you still get that beautiful rich cinnamon and baking spices coming through. Now there's hints of chocolate, dark, dark chocolate, caramel, vanilla, even like cherry. Apricot. It smells really good. It smells like a treat. So, um, but not like, you know, additive or super sweet. It just smells really good naturally, like a good natural um, barrel aged tequila should. All right. So here we go. Salud. Coats the mouth beautifully. Has a beautiful cinnamon and baking spices right up front. Little hint of vanilla that comes through. Some uh, dark chocolate notes in there as well. A little hint of caramel as well. Super easy to drink. I mean, this is ridiculously easy to drink. People are going to love this. The people will love this. If you're a, a Casa Amigos person and you want to try something natural that's has a flavor profile along the same lines, um, pick up a bottle of this Reposado. Uh, it'll blow your mind. It's really good. And there's no additives in this. It's um, it's done right. So I really enjoy this Reposado. It's one I'm sure I'm going to enjoy uh, and will keep on my shelf and enjoy with a good stogie as well. So I give the El Mexicano Reposado for Agave as well. Really good. I really enjoy this. It's a strong Reposado. It's going to it would compete with some of the best Reposados out there for sure. So give it a try. Seriously. Mm. All right. So now we're diving into the Añejo. And of course, the Añejo, just like the Repo, is a blend of both American, new American and French oak barrels. <clears throat> and uh, so this is the new American and French oak barrels that, you know, have been aged for no more than three years. Uh, so they basically sample it and pick out the barrels that are good that they think will work and then blend them together. Let's grab a different glass here. Here we go. I had to drink the rest of the repo. It was so good. I didn't want to leave any in the glass. <laughs> I'm going to really enjoy these. I hope you do too. I hope you guys try them. Seriously. I definitely will enjoy them. So looking at it in the glass, look at that. It coats the glass beautifully. Look at the legs and tears on this. Nice, viscous mouthfeel, oiliness to it. You know they're pulling the right stuff out of the still when they get such a nice viscosity to it. Looking at the tequila itself, it's more of an a amber color now. Being allowed to age a little more in those new barrels. <clears throat> Looks beautiful, though. Looks really good. So let's see what we get here on the nose. 
Mm. Oh, even more rich on the barrel notes. You still get that cinnamon and baking spices cooked agave up front. But then you get this nice, sweet cherry note that comes through. Definitely more vanilla and caramel. Dark chocolate. More ripe fruit, more like apricot. Uh, ripe fruit notes coming through. It smells beautiful. It smells really good. Um, I wish I could just hold this up so you guys could smell it because it smells. Can you smell? Can you smell that? It smells really good. <laughs> it does. All right, so let's get into the tasting of it. Wow. That's a beautiful añejo. Beautiful cinnamon and baking spices, cooked agave up front, vanilla, dark chocolate, caramel, little hint of cherry and ripe fruit coming through as well. Super easy to drink, no burn to it at all. This is delightful. I like this one a lot. I, I like aged you know, tequilas a lot. I also love a, a beautiful high proof Blanco. But so far, I think I really do. I've liked everything so far. Everything's been really good. But this one, I think is exceptional. For, for the, If you're an Añejo drinker, you're going to want to try this Añejo. If you're a Repo drinker, you're going to want to try their Repo. If you're a high-proof tequila drinker, you're going to want to try their high-proof. So far, everything has been excellent. Uh, this one is really good. A good Añejo. There's no oaky bitterness to it. I'm not picking up any anise or anything like that coming through on it. It is just pure delightful on the tongue. I love the Neo. I'm going to give this one 4.5, four and a half agave on this one. Uh, this is delightful. So if you guys get a chance to pick up the Neo and try it, I recommend it. I recommend it. All right, so let's get into the extra Neo now. All right, so now we're diving into the extra Neo. And of course, um, this is aged for over three years in the new American and French oak barrels, not previously touched by any other liquors. Um, I can't wait to see what this one, I, I've tried these all before. In full disclosure, I've tried all of these at the distillery and was fully impressed. So I knew this wasn't going to be a bad review when I did it. I knew I was going to love it, but I forgot what it had been like because it's been a couple years. Uh, since I was at the just actually it's been a year probably since I've been at the distillery um, with with Leon and his family Leon jr. Is an um, amazing person too. He, he's helping run the business. He's great. He knows his stuff So looking at this in the glass. This is the extra Neo. It coats the glass beautifully. Look at the legs and tears on that Silky smooth. It's kind of a nice viscous mouthfeel to it. Nice oily mouthfeel It's gonna be like silk on your tongue Looking at the color, it's a super rich, more um, amber color to it from the time in the in the new barrels. Looks beautiful. All right, let's see what this one's like on the nose. I know I'm I, I know I'm gonna love this one. On the nose, yes, yes. Beautiful cinnamon, sweet cinnamon and baking spices on the nose. Definitely picking up vanilla and caramel, sweet cherry. But it's just rich barrel notes coming through on it. Little hint of butterscotch in there as well on this one. Everything smells really, really, really good. All right, let's see what we get on the flavor flavor palette on this one. <clears throat> I really think the French oak, American oak combo on these just really makes these things pop. Oh my God. Coats the mouth beautifully. Cinnamon and baking spices up front. A little bit of Oaky bitterness that comes in the beginning. Nice vanilla, nice caramel, nice dark chocolate, nice butterscotch notes coming through on it. Extremely easy to drink, or as some of you would say, smooth. Um, 
this thing is just beautiful the way it coats your tongue and the flavor notes and stuff come through on it definitely picking up like the dark chocolate notes from the american oak barrel and more more uh, butterscotch notes and stuff from the french oak on it a beautiful extra nail this is really good I'd rate this one for agave as an extra nihil. So there you go. El Mexicano. We looked at the High Proof Blanco, which is really good. I give that for agave. The Repo, really good as well for agave. The Nejo seems to be more of like my favorite at four and a half agave. And the extra Nejo, beautiful as well. Beautiful flavors on that. I give that one a solid for agave as well. So try it El Mexicano it's available all over you can find it on ferment and still as well um, the the extra Nijo is going to be a little on the pricier side because it's amazing anything good is always going to cost a little more money um, I definitely will keep the extra I keep all these expressions on my shelf and enjoy them they're great if you're a somebody that enjoys good stogies um, these will go along perfectly as well and per paired with meals these things would be fantastic so make sure you check out El Mexicano Tequila, and um, and I, I'm I'm certain you will not be disappointed. So there you go. If you like the information I share with you in this video, make sure you click the thumbs up and give me a like. If you're new to the channel, bienvenido, welcome. We're glad to have you and wish you would participate in the uh, community. So make sure you click that subscribe button right there and click the notification bell next to it. And so that you get notified every time we post a new review or informational video. Um, to help you on your tequila journey. And like I always say, life is too short to drink bad tequila. So if you pick up anything from El Mexicano Distillery, you're in good shape. So make sure you grab the El Mexicano brand and check out some of the other stuff. I'll do some reviews of some of the other stuff they do here shortly. And I look forward to talking to you more about them. Until then, salute. Bye, guys.